Okay, this is just my method. It's not necessarily the end-all method <coughs> to edit photos. It's just where I'm at and what I've learned. I'm going to go through and use <coughs> some of these older pictures. Some of them I don't think I have edited yet. recently. So <clears throat> what I generally do here is come over to the general section first. And I really like this highlight enhancement. Um, I don't like to overuse it, but I find if I put like 10 to 20, it really uh, makes a lot of the details pop. Highlight. Contrast, I generally wait for another process. Saturation, I'm not too worried about. Um, but the vibrance, that's something that I really have found good use for. So if I, and I like, I've been using it a lot, so I'm going to try like 40 here. And you can see it kind of kicks the uh, blue up, it makes the yellow stand out a bit more. Doesn't really look like it's popping enough though, so I'm gonna try 60. That's that's pretty good. I'm come up and do like five on the saturation, and that's that's the thing is this is just an example. Every picture that you edit is going to be different. It's going to require different adjustments. This one I think I will go ahead and use a little bit of clarity on. Focus is good, but it's one of those things that can make details pop again lighting. Uh, I never trust the lighting, but what I'll do is I'll go in and click on the auto, and that's obvious. It's way too much. <coughs> but I like its sense of where the black should be, so I'll leave the darkening <coughs> at about 10. And what I'll do with this is just kind of kick it back. Let's see, here's original. That's way too dark. But if I bring it up, it brings out a lot more of the, the picture this way. But you don't want to go too far with this particular picture or it starts making the beach look just like the water. Okay, about there. Cross-process is interesting. I don't pretend to really understand exactly what it does, but every time I play with it, see, it just it kind of makes things a little more meatier, right? uh, more defined. And this probably wasn't the best picture to start out with, but you can see original, then the modified, original, modified. I think I might go back up, and because this doesn't have a lot of <clears throat> like it doesn't have a person in it, it doesn't have something more detailed. I can afford to go a little bit farther up on the vibrance. Yep, you can see some purples coming. Yeah, that's what we want to avoid right there though, is getting... There's a graininess that starts happening if you over... I'm going to go back down to 60. Okay, so that's better. Done. Save as. <coughs> and I always like to, before I get to the JPEG format, I like to do my general editing in TIFF because things seem to look better. I do the developing to RAW and then save it to TIFF and then I'll go in and edit. check of our horizons here. It looks like it is a little bit off, no matter how... It's one of the most missed things in post-processing, too, I swear. It's one of the simplest things to correct, too. Let's go in and rotate. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, it looks and feels so much more natural when things are aligned evenly. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. That's pretty good. I think I'm going to leave it there. And auto levels is one of those things that just seems to. There, see? It <coughs> adjusts the color, it adjusts the contrast, and I'll go in and do my own stuff, and then I'll test this. It doesn't always bring a better result, but I think in this case, I do like it better. Show previous. Yeah, see how the. It's kind of washed with blue. You do the. Uh, auto levels and it kind of mellows things out a bit. So, I don't know, I think I call that one done. Save as. Every time I go to save a new batch, I'll create a new folder. That way I separate my older post-processing technique from my newer and I can see where I need to go back. I'll just leave it at new folder 4, save. I'm going to do one more here because a normal scene is compared to a person in it. It makes... <laughs> she's so adorable. It makes such a huge difference. So I want to find a good picture of her. Oh, yes. That works. She's pretty. Alright, so I'm going to move my... There. Now you can see where the develop is thing that I'm hitting. This is ACDC Pro. By the way, it's a specific. It's my favorite video editing. If I'm doing layers or adjusting, I'll use Photoshop. But just plain old post-processing, I use uh, ACDC Pro. Yeah, once again, it just kind of you can't really see it because I haven't done the light adjustment yet. But that highlight enhancement does seem to do quite a bit. Uh, let's go ahead and go for lighting next. Once again, I hit the auto, <coughs> obviously way too much, and I don't like how much darkening it's added. I'm going to take the light back down, but you can see the difference. I mean, it just it brings out the person in the picture, it brings out the details. I'm going to take this darkness up. That didn't really make all that much difference. Okay, I guess I kind of agree with it on where it took the darkness and the auto. But you can't ever trust the auto stuff completely. You gotta look at it, you gotta <coughs> change the settings and adjust it to fit the picture. Because software just is not, at least software at this level, is just not intelligent enough to understand what the human eye is gonna find the most pleasing. So use it, but don't completely trust it. <laughs> I think I'm gonna do a vibrance about. 60 on this one as well. Yep, made the background pop, the red in her hair. <coughs> Doesn't look like it made it too grainy. We'll do a 10 clarity, see. Yeah, that kind of made her eye pop a little bit there, I like that. <coughs> now down to the cross process, which I should do more research on, but if I go all the way to the far extreme, it makes it look like it's like an old 70s, badly developed photo or something, but if I take it back down to around the 20 to 25 range, it makes a good defining difference, in my opinion. I always do my cropping and, and rotation. There's no way to rotate or crop in the develop, so of course I have to go do that as a separate process, which is why I save it to TIFF first after developing it from raw. Sometimes I'll go into the color here, like if I want her hair to pop. But the beauty of ACDC Pro is you watch, when I move the cursor over her hair, it will automatically highlight the red or whatever color it's going to boost. And I can just left click, hold it down, and drag up, and you can see it makes the red go up. So if I want hair to stand out. I think I will actually leave that at about 25. Okay. So, that looks good. Looks good. I'm not sure if I'm completely happy with how much it's popping, but I have a feeling if I go over 60 on the vibrance, let's try to add 5 to the saturation. Sometimes that can be a good show original. Oh, vibrant. 
So we'll leave that there. Save as. My new folder four in TIFF format. Oh, that was dumb. I was supposed to save it in the TIFF directory instead of the four directory. But that's done, so now I'm going to edit. And let's check our horizon rotate. Actually, it looks like that's pretty good because this one was, f I think, freehand. I had it on the the tripod, but I was kind of just freehand in there for a while. I think this is one of those. So help! I don't even need to rotate it there. Crop. Now I like to keep the widescreen effect. Uh, it doesn't work for every picture, but and I'm not a rule of thirds guy. I don't. This is my subject matter. The woman's beautiful face is my subject matter. I'm not going to jack her off to the side here and do the old whatever. And that might be a nice effect for some people, but that's not... I'm looking to show off my girl, not my model. <laughs> not um, my understanding of how people tell me my photos should be. That's why I kind of prefaced this whole video with Part of this is a standard process that everybody uses, but in the end, it's your taste. It's how you see things, because that's there are billions of cameras probably out there from old to new. And if you count all the cell phone cameras, absolutely, and it's all about the eye of the photographer. What are you? How are you trying to share the world with people? How do you see the world? So. This is my take. It still looks a little washed out, but I think if I try to do any more than just that, it's going to ruin the picture. And right now, it's a very nice picture, so I'm going to go done and save as and to JPEG. And I make my JPEGs pretty darn huge. That's at uh, 12 full full resolution, basically. That's the finished product. Anyway, I'm planning to do a few more pictures like this. This is my third live stream so far today, <clears throat> so obviously I'm going to be doing this a bit more. I'm going to be game live streaming more than anything, probably, but I will do some photography stuff. So I hope you enjoyed it, and maybe I'll be like every other YouTuber that actually has a bunch of followers. I'm over at about 2,000, over 2,000, so I'm very grateful for my subscribers, but uh, apparently the way that YouTube has things set up now is that if you want to get seen at all, it's all about uh, who likes your video, so if you do like my video and want to see what I do in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you.